Hey everybody, Brian here. What are your thoughts on someone choosing to play a noble character instead of a lower class character? Is this considered a warning sign or is it a red flag? Well, if he's a good boy, he can act as the party's face when you're trying to deal with other nobles. He can open the doors that the rest of the group would struggle to get through. But this entire thing is contingent upon him being a good player and the DM being a good DM. A good player can play a young twink catboy bard and be a good character that the group has fun with. A bad player can make the most basic bitch safe character a pain in the ass for the group. It's always down to the player and the DM. Everything works until it doesn't. I'm very confused. Why? Uh, well, we have a dirty druid hermit, a grizzled swashbuckler, a bard con man, and a bloodthirsty tribal barbarian. And that's confusing you, question mark? No, what's confusing me is the fact that you're playing a rich and powerful sorcerer with ties to the upper class. Ha, <laughs> I'm the party sugar daddy. <laughs> Everybody's gotta have one of them. Well, it isn't a red flag, more of a yellow flag, if they use it in a way that won't bog down the game, of course. If they say they are the son or daughter of the king and can do what they want when they want, or they will tell daddy to behead you, that is a red flag. It depends on the player. Good example would be how I played a noble versus how one of my players played a noble. He just used his noble status as a cheap get out of jail free card so he could be a unrepentant murder hobo while I actively did things in the campaign world to bolster my family's reputation. If I engaged in more nefarious pursuits, I made sure not to be tied to it, such as a scandal that can bring shame and ruination to my family. Hey, if your character can buy their own armor and weapons, they're already not lower class. Nah, my current character in a Kingmaker campaign was the youngest son of a lower noble, which explains his experience with a horse and variety of weapons but it doesn't really affect anything that's happened in the actual campaign so far. Only major thing that has happened is his incredible dislike and panic when it comes to interacting with the other local nobility, including all the times the party has dealt with the king of the neighboring superpower. And let's not forget the fact that he's the only one who knew how to address royalty and talk to them in the beginning. The paladin still doesn't quite get it, but that's what me and the diplomat are for. Well, I want to play a noble character, but I can't think of many good reasons why a noble would want to become a murder hobo. Youngest child destined to get exactly jack shit from the family name, except bills, cured by generations of poor finances and everyone else pissing away the family fortune so you take off to make it big by tomb raiding. You were kicked out of the family or left because of reasons. Maybe you accidentally killed a fellow noble during a duel that went wrong. Maybe you knocked up the wrong daughter. Maybe your mom died and your dad married a new wife half his age, mysteriously died on the shitter, and for whatever reason, you've been having really bad indigestion for the last couple of weeks. Maybe you got drunk at the local watering hole one night and woke up on a ship and 50 miles out to sea because you were talking to that friendly fellow with an eye patch and bad grammar. There are all sorts of reasons why. It's just a matter of finding one that fits. Well, I'd let them, but make it crystal clear that calling upon noble resources will come at fair costs. Their thousand gold favor from Lord Fuck Dicks. <laughs> will leave his family to deal with a situation that could cost him $12.50 to fix, be it in raw cash, resources, or time. Too much debt, and his estate serfs will likely depose or rebel. Honestly, for a player who doesn't want to be combat-focused, being a noble is a great option. Nobles tend to be worse when it comes to combat skills, but better funded and with better access to the high circles of the land. As a result, they will step up to the plate when it comes to serving as the party face, 
acting in high society, or getting a hold of properties or equipment for the party to use. Obviously, making them royal or some other super high-ranking noble would be a bit OP, but making them a peripheral member of a great house or member of a city-state's ruling family would be about right. It can work pretty well if the DM is prepared and ready to play around it. Why would being of good upbringing be a warning sign? Do you resent rich people so much that you can't stand the idea of someone pretending to be one in an elf game? I played the second son of the Elf King's court sorcerer, and my whole character shtick was my sheer arrogance. Yeah, like an elf I'm seeing. Daddy funded the party's expedition, so I was indispensable. I was a rich, racist, classist, caster supremacist, and it was incredible. I only got burned for it once, and that was by the big bad evil guy who was also a caster nobleman, so I didn't have to do any mental gymnastics. Exiled noble whose family's territory was usurped by some evil force is a favorite of mine. Fallen nobility is a good plot hook for a character. Actual nobility is an NPC unless every player is also noble or living near noble people and the adventure uses that setting. There could be exceptions. Your noble is traveling, not on foot of course, and some of the other players are guards and stuff. But you would need a player who is into playing a fish-out-of-water non-combat oriented noble. Can be fun with the right people. It's fine if a player wants to be the second, third child of some noble family who's gone off adventuring to attain fame and fortune for themselves, knowing the title will go to their elder sibling. It's a decent backstory, and history is full of non-inheriting nobles from the lower ranks of the aristocracy, becoming mercenaries or explorers or really whatever. What's not okay is for a player to make a noble character just because they expect the DM to give them all kinds of extra benefits the other players don't have. People need to learn how middle-aged nobility actually worked in most feudal societies. Your small baron was a noble, and so very much above lower classes, but extremely small in comparison to his own liege, being a count or a duke. There's plenty of explanations for being a noble, but not so full of cash. An inheriting child scion better have a damn good reason to be gallivanting with murderers and hedge wizards instead of attending court with their family and trying to find an appropriate match. Some second or third son whose best lot in life is going to end up being subservient to their older sibling already has a decent enough excuse for wanting to f off into the woods and make their own way in the world. Yeah, eat the rich, kid. I played a noble ranger slumming it in a frontier town as a monster hunter. He was laconic and drank whiskey. The only time he ever lost his chill was when the party went up against a vampire. The other players had a hearty chuckle because I was role-playing this as a serious thing. But the GM rolled for the vampire's race and it was a gnome. They stopped laughing when it downed two people in one turn. Yeah, Helsing's about to bust out a cap of whoop ass on that one. I hate those kinds of players and should be banned from ever playing games again. If you are going to be a murder hobo, I will still dislike you, but assume you are just too stupid to understand the game being played. When you start to use roleplay aspects like a noble background or being a paladin as you mentioned to just murder hobo and nothing else except maybe to try to something, then that player should be kicked immediately as they will munchkin everything they do without any form of respect to the players or game master. Out of six groups I have played with, five had this problem and of course, the one group that doesn't have this problem doesn't play D&D as its main game and has played other games. Depends on the setting actually, the player and the character that they want to make. As a general rule, I'm of the opinion that a player that has put more thought into their character than, uh, he's uh, a guy, he adventures, 
Uh, family's dead or something. Uh, I think I was a soldier. Isn't a red flag by itself ever. A lower ranked noble? No. But when they start playing as a princess, it's a giant red flag. Had a group dissolve because the player was dating the DM. Honestly, that's when all the trouble started. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those and been a part of a lot of those. That's not fun. A noble in general isn't a problem. Matter of fact, I considered it to be an entirely normal character angle until I witnessed some of the bitching in this thread. The problem would be if the player identified the most powerful people in the setting and then slimely inserted himself or herself into the middle of it. I'm the prince or princess of the land the campaign takes place in is different from I'm Alfonso de Bumf of Bumfuck Barony, far to the unimportant self. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Basically, any backstory that can be underplayed until the character is high enough level to tap those resources and not seem like his role-playing weight is overpowered. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA just checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, leave a comment down below letting us know about how you would play a noble character and what are your thoughts on playing noble characters in general. And of course, go check out our good buddy Loot Goblin. He does a lot of D&D stories as well, just with a little bit different flavor than we do here. All the love. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.